Good morning, everyone. Uh, happy Lag like Moment, everybody. Um, we're going to look at uh, the third Aliyah of uh, Parshas Bahar, which is the first of the two parashiot that we're going to be laning, or would have been laning, this coming Shabbos. It's a double parsha, Bahar Bahu Kosai, um, the last two parshas in Baikra in Leviticus. We start with Midbar next week. Um, so let's have a look at the third Aliyah, which talks about um, the Institute of Shemitah. Shemitah is one of the distinctive institutions of biblical agricultural laws, uh, and it's the injunction not to um, uh, reap in an industrial manner from your crops in the seventh year, uh, and also not to plant uh, uh, new crops in addition. So you can't take the produce of the field, and you also can't work the land. Now that leads to a, a practical challenge, if you can't uh, do any of those activities in year seven, it means that the activity of year six has to see you through year six, seven, and eight. And that's what these verses are going to um, address. The, um, the, the necessity for faith and uh, for God's blessing to make sure that you have enough food as a result of your activity in year six to eat all the way through. Because, um, importantly, it's not that you can't eat food of the land in year seven, in the Shemitah year, you just can't harvest it industrially. You have to just take what you need on a day-to-day -day basis. Indeed, everyone else can come to your field and take what they need on a day-to-day -day basis as well. You just can't bring it in large quantities into your property uh, as you would uh, in a normal year, in normal agricultural practice. So let's have a look at these verses. We're in chapter 25 of Vayikra of Leviticus, and it's verse 19. The Nas Naharetz, Piriya, the the land will give its fruit. Vachal tem, the sova, and you shall eat until you're satisfied. Vishavtem la vetach aleha, and you shall dwell in security upon it. So this um, this reference to uh, a security is uh, is interesting, and we'll see that uh, coming through in a minute. So the nas uh, the land will re will yield its fruit. And you'll dwell in security. This seems to be a shift from one thought to another. Security tends to imply uh, from a threat of, uh, of, of aggression or violence from the outside. What has that to do with uh, the, the crops giving their, uh, giving, uh, the land giving its crops so well? So Rashi says, Shalom sig sid agu mishnas betsores. You're not going to be frightened of a drought. You're not going to think that next year is going to be a year of drought, that um, the land will be so reliable that uh, you're not going to be concerned about a year of drought. It's not a security against a, a, a human threat, it's security against a natural threat, a uh, threat of drought. Vachatem lasova, you're going to eat until you're satisfied. And now an interesting uh, um, uh, comment. Ach besocha me ayin to hebo bracha. Even in your in your stomach, it's going to be blessed. So even if you don't eat very much, it's going to feel very satisfying, even though, objectively, there isn't much food there. Next verse. And now if you're going to ask, what are we going to eat in the seventh year, the year of Shemitah, when we're not allowed to harvest industrially, um, if, we not, my, if we're not allowed to either sow, that is, plant for the years to come, below Nesof, and we're not allowed to, to gather in a, in a thoroughgoing uh, industrial manner, um, if we are deprived of that uh, capability, how are we going to eat? Because some crops are planted in the first part of the year and are eaten and harvested and eaten in the latter part of the year. So if we can't sow, then what are we going to eat in the latter part of the year? And even those crops which have been planted in the, in the sixth year if we're not allowed to bring them in in a in a in a um, uh, concentrated, efficient manner, uh, then again, how are we going to how are we going to eat? So, Rashi makes an interesting point. Lo so we're not allowed to bring in al habayis into the house. That is to say, you can't bring in stores and stores and stores of food. You can um, gather each day what you need to eat, um, but you can't gather very large quantities as you would normally do and stack them up in your house um, as a means of, uh, of long-term storage. 
Estuosenu, our our produce or our crops, could go in, for example, says Rashi, Yain, uh, wine, uh, Upero Sailan, uh, and uh, fruits of the tree. And this is an interesting category, Usfichin Habayim Me'alehen. And Sfichim are aftergrowths. So when you um, harvest, uh, sometimes uh, more fruits appear sort of uh, um, spontaneously by themselves. They're not. Um, knowingly cultivated, they just appear by themselves. And uh, also these two are uh, in the category of, of produce. You can't say I'm going to gather those in because uh, I didn't intend to um, uh, intend to cultivate them. Anything which comes out of your property, out of your land, out of your crops in this year, falls in the same category and they have to be left alone. We were walking in the um, Banksia scrubland near Marubra on Sunday and we noticed that Whole areas have been burnt out in fires, but um, the uh, shoots were already breaking through the uh, the blackened stubs. They looked like they were dead, but they weren't dead at all. Deep inside, they were still alive, and um, these spontaneous growths were emerging. So, an appropriate um, image for this parish of uh, Bahar. The uh, reassurance: you are not unreasonably worried about what you're going to eat if you're not allowed to. Um, uh, cultivate in in your regular manner. So God says this. I'm going to command, as it were, my blessing for you on the sixth year. And that uh, for three years, for years six and seven and eight. Uh, God says in in response to your um, obedience to uh, the regulations of Shemitah of the seventh year, I'm going to make sure that year six provides enough to keep you going for year six, seven, and eight. And now Rashi explains um, why it's three years. So, Lixasashishis, first of all, you need part of the, you need to have enough food for part of the sixth year, the part after you've planted at the beginning of the sixth year, Minisan Vadrosh Rosh Hashanah. So from Pesach to Rosh Hashanah, the second half of the year, that is food which you planted before Nisan in the sixth year, and there'll be enough food in year six, obviously, for that. For Lashvius, and also the whole of the seventh year, for Lashminis, and also for year eight, because in year eight, you don't have the benefit of what you planted in year seven, because you didn't plant anything in year seven. She Yisru, Bashminis, Barcheshvan, you're only going to be able to start uh, planting in Cheshvan uh, just after Yontuf of year 8 and that will only be um, reaped by you in uh, after Pesach of year 8 so we have half of year so the first half of year 6 has to provide for the second half of year 6 the whole of year 7 and the first half of year 8 so in fact it's 2 years um, in terms of the number of months, let's say, it's 24 months, but it's spread over the course of three years. And uh, and the next verse? Uz ratem es hashonah hashmiyas v'chaltem min hatua yashon ad hashonah hatishiyas ad bo tuasa tochlu yashon. And when you plant in the eighth year, you will still be eating a grain produce which you which came as a result of the sixth year plantings. And in fact, you will eat, be eating this old grain until year nine, until all of your crops have come in from year eight. So in fact, it extends even further into year six, into year seven, maybe even the whole of year eight. It says, Ad Hashanah Hatishis, Hatishis, until the ninth year, maybe until, and then it stops at the start of year nine, or maybe even a little way into year nine. So Ad had Shonah into the ninth year, and Rashi explains Al Chagas Sukos Shel Chias just into until Sukkot. So all the way into the uh, end of the first month of the ninth year, you'll still be able to eating old stuff, old grain. Shehu Ace Bo Tuasa Shor Shminis Asachabayis, which is the time when you bring in the the produce from the from the uh, eighth year. As we know, Sukkot is the festival of, of uh, 
of the harvest, of the autumn harvest in the land of Israel. And so until that time, until that harvest really gets going, you'll be relying on uh, old produce. Shekalimos hakayets hubasada bagronos, because uh, until that point, all of the uh, produce of the summer is still in granaries. Uva tishrei hu eis l'hasif l'bayis. And then in the month of Tishrei, um, after Sukkot, you bring from the granaries into your house and you start to eat it. Uf amim shahaisa tzricha lasosva arba shamim. And although the Torah says explicitly that you will have enough for three years, sometimes you need enough for four years. Why? Because every 50 years there's what's called the Yovel, the Jubilee. Jubilee is simply a transliteration of the Hebrew word Yovel, which means that in year seven, of the seventh cycle of seven years is a normal Shemitah, is a normal sabbatical year where you uh, don't uh, reap or sow. Uh, but then the next year, year 50 in the cycle, is the Jubilee year and you don't do it again. So you have two years off. It means that you have to um, have enough not just for three years but even for four years. So, Bashishi Shalifne Hashmita Hashvias Shutsufos. When you have the situation where you have two consecutive years, when you're not going to be cultivating the land. Hashvias va Yovel. First the Shemitah year, the Sabbatical year, and then the Yovel year, then the Jubilee year. Umikraze nema basha hashmitos kulan. And that's a special case. The Torah itself refers specifically to the regular case, the case of six out of seven years. And the, the last l- uh, verse we'll look at uh, this morning, verse 23. Faaretz le sim macher. And now we just move on to a different regulation about the Jubilee year, not about not allowing the land to be uh, cultivated, but about not um, losing one's uh, inheritance permanently. When the Israelites entered the land of Israel, the land was divided amongst the tribes and within the tribes, and every family got their own bit of land. Um, and they, that land can be sold to other people um, uh, over the course of uh, the years. But in the Jubilee year, it reverts to its owner. And therefore this verse says, The land must not be sold beyond restitution, beyond returning to its original owners. Ki li because the land is mine, says God. And you are Gerim for Toshavim, you are uh, strangers and sojourners with me. So it's always my land, says God, and you are uh, merely, uh, uh, ultimately, people who are, I'm allowing to live here with me. But it never becomes your land. If it's not your land, then you can't give it away. So let's see what Rashi says. Baret lo simacher, the land can't be sold. Litain lav al chazaras sados lebalim biyovel. This this um, imposes a negative commandment, a prohibition. You're not allowed to somehow impede the return of the land to its owner. Um, if you've bought it, then you have to make sure that you give it back at the end of the Jubilee period. It, uh, it means that the purchaser can't detain it. That uh, if it's land which you, in inverted commas, bought, but in fact only really rented for the remainder of the 50-year cycle, it means once that uh, jubilee year comes, you just uh, vacate the land and you give it back, and you don't stand in the way of people um, of people taking back their ancestral portion in the land of Israel. Litzmisus, um, um, in a way that would be lost. So Rush just explains this difficult word. Lifts cut off permanently from its original owners. Lim chira pesuka olamis. It shouldn't be a sale that severs it, that cuts it off from its original owners forever. Uh, in the biblical system, you can never buy land in the land of Israel forever. It's always a rent for the remainder of the 50-year cycle. Ki li because the land is mine, says God. Al teira, eincha ba, don't have, um, well, it's evil eyes towards it. That is to say, don't uh, be, um, be covetous towards it. Um, don't uh, think it's yours. Don't be greedy about it, I suppose. Don't look at it with greedy eyes. Because it's not yours. 
How can you be uh, jealous and greedy? It's not yours to give away. And even when you're on the land, remember, really, I'm still there. And I'm just allowing you to um, live on it with me and enjoy its, uh, its produce. Everyone have a good week and stay well. And uh,